Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So today I thought I would do a video about a Windows 11 Incus virtual machine. I know in the past I've done one about a Windows 11 Lexti virtual machine, but since I recently moved to Incus, I thought I'd go ahead and build a Windows 11 Incus virtual machine from scratch. So Incus virtual machines have full hardware virtualization just like any other virtual machine and the underlying infrastructure is Linux QEMU. So only Linux distros can run in an Incus container which uses the host Linux kernel and that's why our Incus uh, Windows 11 needs to be an Incus VM and not an Incus container. So most Incus VMs are launched from existing images just like Incus containers and that's one of the nice parts about using either LexD or Incus that you don't have to wait for an installation because you're normally launching from an image. But we can create a Windows 11 Incus virtual machine by building the image manually and the reason we have to do that is because there is no such thing as a pre-built Windows Incus virtual machine. So let's go see how this is done. Before we begin our installation, we want to go over to microsoft.com forward slash software dash download forward slash Windows 11. Then you want to scroll down the page to download Windows 11 disk image ISO for x64 devices and then go ahead and select the multi edition and then click on download now. It will say validating your request and then it's going to ask you your product language. In my particular case that is going to be the English US version and I'm going to click on confirm and then it will go ahead and say uh, it's verified the download and so I go ahead and click 64-bit download and I'll go ahead and save that to my downloads directory. So here I am at a terminal on my Incus host and the first thing that I want to be able to do is a sudo snap install distro builder dash dash classic and distro builder is a tool that is used to convert the Windows ISO over to a form that we need. Next we need to install three APT packages and one of them is liveguestfs-tools, another is wimtools, and another is rsync. Those are already installed on my system so we'll continue from here. We want to make sure that our downloaded copy of the Windows ISO is in our current folder and then we want to do a sudo distro builder repack windows the name of whatever your windows iso is in my particular case it's win 11 23 h2 english x64 and it's repackaging that to the same name dot incus dot iso Now that distro builder is complete, I'm going to create an empty Incus VM and I'm going to name my machine Win11VM and the reason for that is because I already have a machine named Win11. By default, an Incus VM will have a default disk size of 10 gigabytes. So we're going to go ahead and change that with the Incus config device override win 11 VM root size equals 85 gigabytes. Now something of note here is you want to make sure that your storage pool is large enough to fit whatever size you indicate here. So if your Incus storage pool is too small you need to go out and enlarge it and you can look up my LexD routines where I explain how to do that because the command is pretty much the same except using the Incus keywords. So here we're overriding the size of that empty VM and we're setting it to 85 gigabytes. 
Next, we want to set the resources for our virtual machine. And here I have an Incus config set Win 11 VM. And I'm going to give it four CPU cores and I'm giving it eight gigabytes of memory. Next, Windows requires the trusted platform module. And so we're going to give it a virtual TPM, the trusted platform module that Windows requires. And so here we're doing that. Next, we have to specify the installation ISO that we created with Distro Builder. And so we do an Incus config device add Win11 VM, the name of the machine, the install disk. And here you have to provide the complete pathway. In my case, it's slash home slash Scott Win11 under bar 23H2 under bar English under bar x64 dot Incus dot ISO. Recall that the dot Incus dot ISO was the output of the distro builder. And finally, boot dot priority equals to 10, which causes the Incus VM to boot from the CD rather than from the hard drive. We want our Incus virtual machine to have sound and it can do that through the spice driver. So we have an Incus config set win 11 VM raw dot QEMU and we're specifying the spice driver for the sound. Now we're ready to install Windows and the way that we're going to do that is with an Incus start win 11 VM dash dash console equals VGA and when we do that it will launch the remote viewer and as soon as it comes up with the splash screen it says hit any key make sure to hit any key and it will go ahead and begin to boot the CD and initiate the Windows installation. So I'll go ahead and say English US hit next and then click install now and it begins setup. At this point, I can come up here and do a view full screen, and that way I won't be confused with my background screens. This time, I'm not going to um, activate the product key right away, so I'll just go ahead and do a next, or I'll just say I don't have a product key, and I suppose it'll continue. And so it asks me which one I want. I'll go ahead and say I want Windows 11 Pro because I do have a license for Windows 11 Pro. And then I'm going to go ahead and click next. Go ahead and accept the software license terms and click next. And then I'll go ahead and say uh, install Windows only. And then uh, drive allocated space is 85 gigabytes, which is the size of the drive that I specified with the override command. And I'll click next. It copies the Windows files and proceeds with the installation. At this point, it was going to go ahead and do a reboot, and that will drop you out of the remote viewer. So what you need to do is in Incus console, win 11 VM dash dash type equals VGA and it will bring the console back up and you'll be able to see the installation continue. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and pop into full screen mode again. At this point, it dropped back out, so I'm going to do another Incus console win 11 VM dash dash type equals VGA and it goes ahead and comes back up. As you know, Windows does several reboots during the process of installation. Now we get to continue with the installation dialog. So I go ahead and say yes, I'm in the US. And yes, the US keyboard is what I want. No, I don't want a second keyboard layout. It goes out and checks for updates. And now another reboot. This time we don't hit the key to continue because we don't want to boot from the CD. We want to boot from the hard drive. 
Now I get to name my machine. I'm going to name it Win11VM and click Next. Once again, I have to go back in and it's booting up again. I'm going to select Setup for Personal Use and click Next. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Sign In. I don't really have a Microsoft account, nor do I want one, so I'm going to go ahead and type in no at thankyou.com and I'm going to click Next. And then for the password, I'll just type in whatever. It doesn't really matter. And I'll click Sign In. Now it'll say something went wrong, and then I'll click Next. And then go ahead and type in your name as an example. And then it'll go ahead and let you create a password. And now what we have is a local account once I confirm my password that I entered. In this way, I don't have a Microsoft account. I have a local account. So it'll say, uh, what's your first pet's name? And I'll just put something in there. And security question two, what was your childhood nickname? I don't know. Put something else in there. And then what was the name or, or city where your parents met? Boy, one, two, three, four is really common here. And I click next. And now I have a local account. Choose the privacy settings. Sure, I want Microsoft to know where I am and I want to be able to find my device and all that. You can turn these things off, but since this is a demo machine, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it alone. I'll go ahead and click accept. And now our Incus Windows 11 VM is up and running. We can go ahead and come over here and look at a number of things. Uh, we can go into computer management as an example. And we can go to device manager. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of PCI devices that are not recognized. And that's because we need to go and install some drivers. So we need to install the Red Hat Vert IO drivers. In order to do that, I've gone into the Microsoft Edge web browser and navigated to www.linux-kvm.org and gone to the download drivers section. And it says, if you scroll down the page, it says latest Vert IO drivers for Windows from Fedora. I go ahead and click on that. And then if we scroll down, it says for details on downloading the drivers, please go to this location. We go ahead and click on that. And then there are downloads. So we can go ahead and download the latest Vert IO WinGuestTools.exe. And so I click on that and it goes ahead and downloads it. I can go ahead and say open the file and then after a couple minutes I say agree to the license terms and install yes I want to provide it the ability to install and I go ahead and do a next and I accept the license terms and I click next and then I go ahead and leave all the defaults and click next again and finally I click install And then we can click close. We can go ahead and exit the Edge browser. And at this point in time, it's a really good idea to reboot our Windows system. So I can come down here and click the Start menu and go ahead and click the Power button and say Restart. When I click Restart, again, it's going to exit the Vert Viewer and go back to the terminal and I just do another Incus console win 11 VM dash dash type equals VGA and then I'm going to go up here and do a view full screen again and it should boot my windows up and I go ahead and click that 
go ahead and type in my password and it logs me in. At this point I can right click on the background and say display settings and display resolution and it's set to 1280 by 1024 but I'm going to set it to 1920 by 1080 and go ahead and say keep changes. Now I can go back down here to the start button, right click on it, and go into device manager. And in device manager you see we still have a couple of other uh, PCI devices that have not been found. But if I go under display adapters you can see it's using the Red Hat Vert IO adapter for that. If I go under disk drives, it says it's using the QEMU SCSI device. And uh, so that's a really good thing. And if I go under storage controllers, it says it's using the Red Hat Vert IO storage controller, which is also a good thing. At this point, we have a fully functional Windows 11 Incus virtual machine. The last thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and shut this machine down by hitting the power button here and doing a shutdown. Once the machine completely shuts down, there's really no reason why we need to leave our uh, CD mounted to this machine. And so we can go ahead and remove that and I'll just go ahead and do a shutdown anyway. So we do an Incus config device remove Win11 VM install. You'll remember I called that CD install and so now we've removed that. So now when we boot up our Incus Windows 11 virtual machine, we're going to use the command Incus start Win11 VM dash dash console equals VGA and we should not see the prompt to boot from the CD DVD image. And sure enough we don't and it goes ahead and boots up Windows 11 directly. And it is booted up. And I can click here and type in my password and I'm logged in. So in summary, in this tutorial we saw how to manually build a Windows image using Distro Builder and creating an empty VM image container. Windows can run as an Incus virtual machine but not as an Incus container. And you can take an image of your completely configured Windows 11 VM and use it to create other Windows 11 Incus VM instances. And Incus VMs support exported backups and snapshots just like Incus containers. Windows in an Incus VM is good for rapid prototyping and development tasks. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.